This video is going to supplement the main video that we have about conditional execution uh, by introducing a new syntax, a new statement in the C programming language uh, that is a switch statement. So the switch statement is also found in plenty of other programming language, if not all. Okay. The idea of a switch statement is that it allows you to replace a bunch of cascading if-else statements. So what I mean is that if you have a structure in your code that says, for example, if, uh, I don't know, the input provided by the user is equal to one, then I want to do something. Print test, for example, the translation of the, the number one into plain English, okay? Um, else, if input equal equal two, then I'm going to print that two. Okay, and let's switch to put s actually since we are just displaying simple strings here. Put s, there we go. And put s. Okay, so if I have a structure like this, right, where I am uh, testing some user input, so let's go and define this so we can compile this program and run it. Int input equals zero to start of with, uh, printf, enter, an int value, so that would be probably a positive int value, and then scanf, read from the user, so we want to read an int, and we want to store it inside the variable input. There we go, so it's starting to look like something. So we have a little program that's going to read an int value and then tell us, you know, if we typed one, it's going to say one, if we type two, it's going to say two, and so on and so forth. So uh, some spacing at the end. Okay, let's save this. Compile it. GCC main.c. Run the default executable name, a.out, enter a value one, and it's going to tell me one. Okay, perfect. All right, so I, that could go on and on and on, okay? This line here could repeat over and over and over. Uh, for example, here we're going to just go one, two, four, okay? There we go, and we have the structure that unfolds like this, and it keeps on going. So the point of the switch statement is to make this kind of stuff maybe a little bit more concise, a little bit more readable. So the way that it works is we are going to have a switch keyword, okay? It's followed by an expression between parentheses, okay? Curly braces, and inside the curly braces we use the keyword case to indicate what are the values that we are going to consider. Okay, so in our case here, in no open intended, in our case, we want to switch on the value of input. So this expression here has to be always a discrete value, right? Something that can be a, a letter or like a, a number, an integer number. It cannot be a floating point number. It cannot be an entire string, etc. Uh, so input here is of type int, which is going to work just fine. So what we are saying is that we want to switch what we are doing based on the value of this expression, which is just the content of the variable input. And uh, what we are going to say is case, if the value of that expression is one, do something. If the value is two, do something else. Case three, case four, and so on and so forth, okay? So we could have also a default case, so that would correspond to keep the analogy between the if else, if else, and the switch statement. If I add here, you know, a else at the end that says, but um, I don't know how to count that far. Okay. So uh, that means that if it's not one, two, three, four, then we don't translate anything. We just say, hey, you know what, I'm out of my league here. Um, and we can do the same thing here. So we can say one, two, three, four, case one, two, three, four, and then default is another keyword that works in the switch statement, okay? And it's going to be allowing us to do things like this. Put one, put two. And again, for those of you who are coming from uh, from a, a Java background, for example, the syntax is very, 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 very similar. Okay, there are very, uh, actually there are no distinction here that I can think of from the top of my head, okay? Uh, just from the syntactical point of view, it is definitely very, very similar, okay? So here I have, uh, I'm going to simplify that message a bit on the screen, don't know. All right, and I'm going to put that here in the default. There we go. 
And we have approximately the same structure. Okay, there's one thing that we need to add for. It's not over yet. Okay, if I try to if I try to compile this, it's going to compile. If I try to run it, let's see what it does. Enter an in value, let's say three. Three, three, four, don't know what's going on here. So the first thing that executes is that if statement right here. Okay. So what's going on is what was going on before. It says if input equal one, that's false. If input input equal two, it's false. I enter the three here. If input equal three, it's true. It puts on the screen the string three. Here it is. Okay. So that makes sense. And then I try to do the same thing with the switch. Switch input. Input is equal to in this case three. This is the value I entered. Uh, is it one? No. Is it two? No. Is it three? Yes. Display three. Here it is. But then it displays four, and then displays don't know. So it's like I didn't enter case one. I didn't enter case two. I did match the three of case three, so I entered case three. But then it looks like I cascaded through and executed, you know, the code for case four the code for the default case. So that's the default behavior for the switch statement. So that's why you're going to see that most of the time we have this keyword break that we uh, systematically add at the end of every case, okay? At the end of every case, the break that I add here means I'm done, get out of the switch statement. So now if I run this again, so save it, compile it, run it, I'm going to use the same value, free. Well, now it's working better, right? So this one we already covered. Okay, you know what? why it works. What happens here? Case one, the value I entered is three. doesn't match, I skip. Case two, doesn't match, I skip. Case three, it matches. I execute this code, which means I display three on the screen, and then I break out of the switch statement, which brings me here. Okay, and I'm going to put a message here done in the program, okay, so that we know exactly when we eat that part. And here, okay, I'm going to put a message also that say, now we've switch. Okay, so that's just going to clarify a little the, the output. Okay, so um, are those break statements necessary? No, they are optional, as you could see, okay, but they are necessary if you want each case to execute a little bit of code, and that's it, and then jump out of the switch statement. Now, sometimes we uh, we don't want to do that. Sometimes we want to use this cascading feature, okay? But before I get to that, let's talk briefly about the last break statement here. The last break statement, um, if I end up in the default section here, I'm going to execute this, then I'm going to break out of the switch. But what if I remove this break? Well, what's going to happen? If I match the default section, I'm going to execute this, and then I'm going to cascade into the next case. But there is no case after that particular section. So I reach the end of the switch, so I get out. So I can remove that last break statement, the break statement of whichever case you know you have considered last in your list of cases uh, for the switch statement. That one doesn't need a break, technically speaking. You can leave it if it, that, that pleases you, right? Uh, but it's not going to change anything. Case in point here, I'm going to give the number five there we go don't know so let's go again what happened here this one here don't know then let's switch to the switch statement switch statement displays don't know and then we are done with the program okay so that extra break here not necessary so now i mentioned right before we talked about this extra break at the end i mentioned that sometimes we want that cascading behavior okay so let's say that we want to do two things with our int value. First, we are going to translate it into plain English. Okay, but translating into plain English. And then detecting if it's even or odd. Okay. So how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to say, for example, case one, but the number is odd. Case two, but the number is even. 
and then I could keep going on like that, but this is going to be very boring, okay, and there's going to be a lot of typing for not much result. So let me try something different here. I'm going to say that case 1 and case 3 are where I want to actually display that the number is odd. So here we are. So what did I do here? I wrote case 1. If you match case 1, if input is equal to 1, do nothing. And then there is no break statement, right? So that means that I cascade into the code for the next case that's right below me. So I display odd, and then I break out of the switch. If uh, input was equal to 3, case 1 would not match. Then case 3 would match. I would execute this code here. And then I would execute my break. So if it's 1 or 3, I am actually executing this code and then breaking out. Similarly, I can say here that if it's 2 or 4, I want to execute the same code. So I'm going to have like empty case statements that are just there to trigger, to match actually the input and do nothing but allow me to cascade into the next one. And I could have multiple like that that cascade in a row, for example, case 5, okay? So I want to extend a little bit the range of numbers that I'm handling in this program, case 6. And you see the structure is the same, okay? The structure is always like you have a bunch of empty cases. So if I match a 2, a 4, or a 6, I end up here. If I match a 1, a 3, or a 5, I end up here, okay? And these are the two, I would say, the two main, uh, most common, most common is better. The two most common usages that you're going to see of, of the switch statement. But truth is that I could have some weird stuff. For example, if it's case 1, 2, or 5, I want to put odds, okay? But then I want, I don't want to break. So I want to also continue here, fall through here, fall through here, display even, and then only break. Uh, in the case of the example of the program that says if a number is even or odd, that doesn't make any sense, okay? But I'm just trying to show you here that the structure is very flexible, okay? Those keyword breaks are optional. You just have to understand what they do and what not having the keyword breaks does as well. And once you are there, then you can decide, you know, whichever you want to use, uh, which design you want to use, and if you need or not a uh, break statement. If we were to do the same thing, so first let's make sure that this code is working, so that I don't show you bad code, right? Always a plus. So compile, run it. So let's see, enter 1, translation to plain English 1, detecting if it's even, it's odd. We are done with the program. 2, 2 is even, 3. 3 is odd, 4, 4 is even, and so on, so forth, okay? So, uh, so it's working. What if I was trying to do this with, uh, let's say, a if statement? What would that look like? Well, very easy. Let's add this at the end with if else, okay? So we would have something that looks like, actually it's going to look like if, input equal equal 1, or input equal equal 3, or input equal equal 5, okay? So these are like the, the, the three numbers that I want to catch here, 1, 2, 3, and 5, and, and when I catch those numbers, I'm going to do a put, pod, just like I did above, okay? And then else, And inside the ES statement, I'm going to have something very similar to this, so I'm going to just cut and paste it, okay? Else, if input equal equal 2, 4, or 6, then I want to do puts even. And finally, else, puts Don't know. Okay? So that would be the equivalent structure. And this is why switch statements sometimes are easier to read. This is why we have this syntax. It's there's nothing a switch statement can do that a bunch of if else cannot do. It's just that sometimes it's more readable 
to write it with a if statement and with a bunch of if else. Um, the opposite, by the way, is not necessarily true. Uh, there are things that you can do with a bunch of if else statement that you cannot do with a switch. Uh, case in point, um, I mentioned that this expression here needs to be something that is always a discrete value, a scalar value, right? It needs to be something that uh, that is not going to uh, how to say uh, vary at runtime, okay? Uh, so it's the idea here is that we have additional constraints with our switch statement. Um, another constraint that we have is uh, the order here. As you can see, we can change the order here. We can put one three five or three one five or something like that, right? We could even put the puts in one and then five and do five three one instead. So we have flexibility on the order here, but you can tell that. Uh, that it's not as expressive as if we had a more complex Boolean expression here that would involve, for example, logical AND and logical ORs. So a switch statement is just a convenient way to write a specific type, a specific category, a specific family of uh, things that you would write otherwise with a bunch of if-else, but not everything. Okay. Whereas the if-else, yes, you can do everything with the if-else, if-else, that you can do, that you could do with a switch statement. So let's run that once more. Make sure that it's, that I show you code that actually compiles and run correctly. So again, one, one is odd, and then it's odd also when we detect it with a if else, always reassuring. Uh, two, two is even, three, three is odd. So far so good, the program uh, behaves the way that we want it to behave. Four, five, and six. So every time I'm checking here that we have the same you know, answer with both the switch and the if else statement to make sure that they are equivalent. And if I enter something else, so for example, uh, eight, sorry, sorry about that, eight here, there we go. So don't know, don't know, don't know, perfect. That's exactly what I needed. All right, so that's it. That's it for the switch statement, okay? Um, it's uh, it's one of those things that generally what I say in the class is you need to know how to use the switch statement. You need to know how to read the switch statement. You need to know all the little tricks that can happen, you know, in the syntax of a switch statement. Uh, so the quizzes are going to help you practice this kind of stuff. Uh, now, when you are writing code, except if I ask you explicitly, I force you to use the switch statement, it's up to you. So my recommendation is that if you are if you are not 100% sure if you're fitting with a switch statement or you don't like it, then when you are writing code for an exam or something like that, uh, then don't use it. Use a if else statement. But you still need to be able to read and understand a switch statement from other people's code. Okay, let's make that clear. Uh, however, when you write your own code, then you have uh, freedom of deciding how you want to write your own code. So go always with what makes the most sense to you, what you are the most familiar. All right, and that's going to wrap it up with this short video. And if you have questions, as usual, from Office Hours, you know where to find me.